All right, counsel, is that sufficient time? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Okay. So are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Yes, okay. Your Honor. All right, so um, I believe you stated your appearances for the record. Let's just recall it. D101CR 202341, State of New Mexico versus David Halls. Counsel, please state your appearance again. Uh, Carrie Morrissey and Jason Lewis on behalf of the State of New Mexico. Thank you. Lisa Taraco representing Mr. Dave Halls, who is also on um, the Google Meet. Okay, is he going to appear by video as the... Uh, yes, attorney? Your Honor. And his video is currently off, but you can see his name on it if you'd like for him to come on. He can do that. I, I think he should be uh, present, Mr. Halls, by video. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, very good. And then I we would I would like to put on the record that it was uh, the defense that asked for a, a video plea. Yes, Your Honor. We're waiving um, in-person appearance. Thank you very much for granting that. Okay, very good. All right, let's put the terms on the record, Ms. Morrissey or Mr. Lewis. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Halls uh, will be pleading no contest today to negligent use of a deadly weapon, uh, and that is the uh, unsafe handling of a firearm. Uh, the state is agreeing to a suspended sentence with six months of unsupervised probation with the conditions that are outlined in paragraph one of the plea agreement. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Halls, I need to ask you some questions to make sure that you understand your criminal case and that you're entering into this plea knowingly, voluntarily, and willingly. So my first question is, how old are you? I'm 63 years old. And how far did you get in school? Um, associate of Arts degree. Um, All right, and these are uh, standard questions. So mm -hmm. um, were you able to understand, so, uh, were you able to understand your criminal case? Yes. Your were Honor. you able? Yes. Y yes, Your Honor. All right. Were you able to read the plea and disposition agreement? Yes, Your Honor. So when you signed the plea and disposition agreement, you understood what you were signing? I did, Your Honor. Do you suffer from any mental or emotional illness? No, Your Honor. Are you under the influence of any alcohol or drugs today? No, Your Honor. All right, let me go over your constitutional rights because by entering this plea of guilty, you're giving up important constitutional rights. You have the right to remain silent. You're presumed innocent of the charges. The state has the burden to prove that you are guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You are not required to prove that you are innocent. You have the right to an attorney at all stages of the proceedings and an attorney appointed free of charge if you cannot afford one. You also have the right to trial by jury. At trial, you would have been able to confront people that accused you of this crime. Your attorney would have been able to ask questions of them in front of the jury. You could have brought in your own witnesses and your own evidence, and you could have had the court require witnesses to appear and testify on your behalf. Do you understand those rights? I do, Your Honor. And are you willing to give up those rights today for this plea? Yes, Your Honor. You may have legal defenses to the charges. I don't know, but you're giving up those legal defenses as well. Do you understand that? I understand, Your Honor. All right, so you're going to be entering a plea of no contest, which is still a conviction uh, of, to a petty misdemeanor. That carries a uh, term of incarceration of, or an exposure to incarceration of six months. I'm going to suspend that six months and place you on unsupervised probation. And then you're going to have uh, some uh, requirements that are uh, in addition to standard conditions of unsupervised probation. Um, have you been told anything about your sentence or given any promises that are different than what Ms. Morrissey put on the record? I have not, Your Honor. Can you assure me of that, Ms. Taraco? Um, we did. We, um, I did. This is what we had. I had to talk to Ms. Morrissey about prior to starting. Ms. Carmack told us that we could argue for a deferred sentence. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. And... Um, so I are do you opposed? To, do you agree with that? Any opposition to that? I have no objection to that. All right. I have no objection to her arguing. I understand. All right. Okay. Um, is this please something you're doing of your own free will? 
Mr. Halls? That question yes. went to you. Is this please something you're doing of your own free will? Yes, Your Honor. Has anyone applied any force or made any threats or promises to get you to enter into this agreement? No, no, Your Honor. All right, you're represented by Ms. Taraco. Have you had the opportunity to go over your case with her and explain any defenses you think you might have had? Yep, yes, Your Honor, I am. All right, do you understand that your plea will have an effect upon your immigration and naturalization status as that applies to you? I do understand, Your Honor. All right, are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, I am, Your Honor. All right, factual basis, please. You're on uh, mute. I apologize. Thank you. Uh, on October 21st, 2021, uh, Mr. Halls was the safety coordinator on the uh, filming set for the movie Rust. Uh, as safety coordinator, I will also say Mr. Halls has over 30 years of experience. Um, prior to October 21st of 2021, there had been two previous negligent discharges of firearms on that set. Uh, a camera crew had walked off the set the day before due to safety concerns, among other issues. Um, and there were a number of functional firearms on set. On October 21st of 2021, uh, the crew and the actors were preparing for, I think what we would refer to as sort of a pre-rehearsal uh, of a scene where Mr. Baldwin uh, has a gun and, and pulls his gun in a cross-draw motion. Uh, Mr. Baldwin was uh, practicing prior to the actual rehearsal, uh, this cross-draw motion. Ms. Gutierrez-Reed, as the court knows, uh, a charged co-defendant, uh, initially brought the firearm uh, into the church where the scene was being filmed, handed an empty, unloaded firearm to Mr. Halls. Uh, he checked it, confirmed that it was empty and unloaded. Ms. Gutierrez-Reed then took the gun back and loaded the gun with uh, what people I think believed were going to be dummy rounds. Uh, dummy rounds are uh, rounds that look like bullets, uh, but they don't have any gunpowder in them and they don't explode, they don't create smoke. Uh, so Ms. Gutierrez-Reed came back into the church where the scene was being shot with uh, the firearm. She handed it to Mr. Halls. She explained to Mr. Halls that she had loaded it with dummy rounds. Now the protocol at this point in time is for Mr. Halls to check and confirm. Uh, he's kind of the last line of defense. Uh, so he needed to check and confirm that the rounds that were in the gun were actual dummy rounds. Uh, there is a way that there, there is a way to easily check uh, and see that a round is a dummy round and not an actual live round. Uh, Mr. Halls did not check every round that was in the gun to confirm uh, that it was a dummy round and not a live round. He then handed the gun to Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Baldwin began to practice his cross draw. And during that action of practicing the cross draw, uh, the gun went off. And uh, obviously Ms. Hutchins uh, was struck by the bullet and was killed. That is the factual basis for uh, Mr. Hall's taking the no contest plea to the unsafe handling of, of a deadly weapon. All right, thank you. Are there any exceptions to that factual basis, Ms. Taraka? I believe, Your Honor, that um, that is what the state could prove or could convince a jury of, and therefore we're pleading no, uh, Mr. Hall's was pleading no contest and not guilty to those two, to that claim. Thank you. All right. Mr. Halls, um, with respect to the only count in this uh, criminal information, negligent use of a deadly weapon, unsafe handling, occurring on or about October 2021, in October 21st, 2021, in Santa Fe County, New Mexico, how do you wish to plead? Uh, no contest, Your Honor. 
All right. I find that there is a factual basis and uh, the no contest plea is accepted and entered. Anything prior to sentencing? Uh, we would ask the court to impose a suspended sentence. Uh, obviously, this was a very serious incident. Um, a young woman lost her life. Uh, there were obvious safety issues on this set uh, before October 21st. And Mr. Halls was, as the court knows, the safety coordinator on set. For that reason, we would ask for a suspended sentence. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Tarako. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Um, one of the things that would be litigated if this case were to go to trial is what is the role of the safety coordinator. And we deny that it's the role of the safety coordinator that he is in charge of safety. If the um, people handling the firearms are negligent, he can't control how other people handle firearms. What he can do and what he was supposed to do is have safety meetings and trainings and make sure that people are aware that there are firearms on set, that there's horses on set, that people need to stay hydrated, that there's rattlesnakes in the area, things like that. But he doesn't have control over how individual people handle things. And he was not the supervisor of the people who handled the firearms that did this charge. So we tend to disagree with some of those facts about what the role is regarding the safety coordinator. Um, nonetheless, um, when Ms. Gutierrez-Reed brought the firearm into the, um, on, on set into the church, um, he did check the firearm. When he is checking for a firearm at that point in time, he's checking to see if there are blanks or dummy rounds in the firearm. Never in anyone's wildest dreams, never, it, never in anyone's imagination did ever anyone think that there could possibly be a live round in the firearm. Mr. Halls does not handle firearms. He does not like firearms. His job is not to handle firearms. And so when checking the firearm, he wouldn't have even thought that there was a live round in that, in that gun. So um, in his mind, he was checking for dummy rounds or blanks. And he, like many others, is extremely traumatized and, and just, you know, rattled with guilt and so many other feelings of, you know, what could I have done better? How could I have changed things? The no contest plea, we're trying to come in early. We're trying to make things, Mr. Hull specifically said, make things easier for the family, make e things easier for the co-defendants who have to be going through these same kind of feelings of, you know, what could I have done better? Or how could I have handled things better? The same kind of um, survivor's guilt, I think is what I would best call it. Um, and I think the biggest thing is the focus on the Hutchins family is, Mr. Halls is like, I wanna get this over with. Everybody needs to start processing and moving on. And we feel like one way that he can do that and not make this any more painful than it absolutely has to be is to come in early to, um, to address it with the court and to close his case. And in light of those circumstances and the tremendous amount of reflection that my client has for the Hutchins family and for the survivors of the Hutchins family. And then also for the director, Joel Souza, is to come in, close his case, take the consequences as they come and let everyone move on. And so in light of that, we ask that you give him a deferred sentence. He's happy to do um, any conditions that the court would have over the next period of time. And he's happy to co uh, cooperate either with the co-defendants or with the state, whoever needs any of his insight or testimony that might be needed as this case moves on to fruition. So, um, Mr. I just, wa I just wanna emphasize to the court, Mr. Halls is in a lot of pain and a lot of trauma. He was three feet from Ms. Hutchins when the firearm went off. No one expected this. Th this was not even foreseeable. And we would just implore the court to allow him the opportunity to have the deferred sentence. 
Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Anything else before sentencing? Not from the state, Your Honor. All right. I, I don't think Mr. Hall is able to address the court, but thank you. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. Halls, uh, this is going to be your sentence. Um, I appreciate uh, Ms. Taraco's uh, summation of, um, of your position and what you were required to do and what you were not required to do. However, I do think that a no contest plea on supervised probation is certainly um, uh, giving some consideration to, a lot of consideration to what Ms. Taraco was talking about with respect to your position. I'm not persuaded that a deferred sentence is appropriate for you in this case. So you are sentenced as follows. You are sentenced to six months uh, of incarceration. I'm hereby suspending that and placing you on unsupervised probation. In addition to the standard conditions of unsupervised probation are that um, as follows. You will agree that you will testify truthfully in all hearings, trials, or settings involving any and all defendants and co-defendants in this matter. You're going to pay a $500 fine. You shall participate in a firearm safety course and present proof of completion to the district attorney within 60 days of the acceptance of this plea. You agree to take responsibility for your actions or inactions. You shall obey all federal, state, and local laws or ordinances criminal. Defendant, uh, you shall not possess or use any alcohol or controlled substance without a valid prescription. You shall complete 24 hours of community services. You shall have no contact with any potential witnesses or co-defendants in this case. All right, um, and then the state reserves the right to withdraw this plea and prosecute any and all charges supported by probable cause if you violate the terms and conditions of this plea agreement, fail to testify at any hearing in the criminal matters, commit a new offense, fail to abide by conditions of release pending sentencing, fail to appear at any scheduled court hearings or violate any terms and or conditions of unsupervised probation. So is there anything um, else, counsel, that uh, that I may have uh, missed or that you wish to um, confirm on the record? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Okay, you're on mute, Ms. Taraka. Thank you very much, Your Honor. There's nothing further. Okay. All right, Mr. Halls, thank you. We are in recess in this case. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.